Hello everyone, welcome to this video. In this video, let us understand actuators. First, let us see the definition of actuator and then light emitting diode, seven segment LED display and a stepper motor. What is actuator? Actuator is a transducer which converts electrical signal into physical action. Actuator is exactly doing the reverse operation compared to sensor. Sensor will sense the physical quantity and it will convert that into an electrical signal. But actuator is a device, it will take the electrical signal and convert back to the physical action. Means these actuators are generally the output devices we are going to connect in a embedded system. We are going to connect these actuators to the output of any microcontroller. And examples are, it can be a LED or DC motor, stepper motor, seven segment display, and it can be a buzzer. First, let us understand LED. LED is an output device. We are going to use this LED to indicate some presence of action. Means, suppose in an embedded system, we need to indicate that embedded system is on, we can use this LED. When LED is on, we can say the device is on. When LED is off, the device is off. Similarly, we can use this LED to indicate the battery low condition, charging of the battery, etc. How to use this LED to turn on and turn off? We can see here. LED is a diode. It will be having an anode and cathode terminals. When anode is connected to VCC and cathode is connected to ground, we are making this LED as forward bias. Then only this LED will be turned on. And when the anode is connected to ground and cathode is connected to VCC, the LED is off, we can say. So what is there in the LED then? This LED will be having a LED chip inside and also it will be having a reflector tray and epoxy resin lens is there inside and there will be a gold wire. And how to indicate the cathode and anode of this device? Anode will be a lengthy one, cathode will be a short one in the connection terminal so that we can identify this as anode and this as cathode. To make this LED to turn on or turn off, there are two methods. One is current sourcing method, another one is current sinking method. What is current sourcing method? So let us assume a LED is connected to a microcontroller. Means since it is an output device, this LED is connected to a port of microcontroller. This PD naught is a port. When this LED will be connected to a port, this port may give the value 0 or 1 to make this LED to turn on and turn off. But here, it is an anode and it is cathode. Cathode will be connected to ground and anode is connected to a microcontroller port. Suppose if you are going to pass 1 from the port, anode will be having one value means VCC. So LED will be turned on means what? Here we are sourcing this LED with a current source or it will be sourcing the LED with a current. So to make the uh, diode to turn on. And if you pass zero, the current will be zero flowing through the diode and it will be off. This method will be called as current sourcing. Then what is current sinking? Current sinking method will be having a connection of diode to a port in this way. Anode is already connected to VCC and cathode is connected to the port of the microcontroller or microprocessor. Whenever this port will be having a zero value, LED will be turned on. Means what? VCC is responsible for current flow through the diode or LED. That current will be flowing to the microcontroller port. Means port will be act as current sinking here. It is consuming the current we can say. Suppose if we pass one from the port what happens? This diode becomes reverse biased and LED will be off. These are the two methods of current sourcing and current sinking to connect LED to a microcontroller port. And then seven segment LED display. This seven segment LED display is going to use the LEDs. There are seven LEDs here to display a number. A, B, C, D, E, F, G are the seven LEDs. And also we will be having an eighth LED to display a decimal point. So it will be an 8 LED device. We call it as 7 segment. Why? Because to display a number, we are going to use 7 LEDs or 7 segments, we can say. So in the previous topic, we have seen to turn on and turn off the LED, we may use a ground connection to cathode and we can use the anode from the ports. Otherwise, we can connect to a anode to a VCC and also we can using cathode connection also. So there are two methods here also. One is common anode method and another one is common cathode method. What happens in the common anode method? All the anodes of these 8 LEDs are connected to VCC already. Means 
this diode is ready to be a forward by acid 1 once it is once these a b c d e f g and d p are connected to zero these leds are going to be turned on we need to give zero as the values from these a b c d e f g and d p then only leds will be turned on since the anode is already connected to vcc we are going to call it as common anode what happens in the common cathode cathodes of all the leds are connected to ground and we need to pass one from the anode to make the led to turn on suppose if a is equal to 1 means this led will be on if d is equal to 1 means this led will be on here if d is equal to 0 led will be on if a is equal to 0 led will be on so let us see how the numbers are going to be displayed with respect to these codes here you can see if a is equal to 0 b is equal to 0 similarly all are 0 and g is 1 g in the sense it is the middle one here we are using a common anode method common anode method in the sense all the anodes of the leds are already connected to vcc and we need to provide zero wherever the led has to turn on means for zero we need to make all these leds to turn on except this g g will be the center one so we need to pass one from g so that that led will be off dp is also not required that's why i need to pass one so that all these are going to glow except this middle one and a dot right that's why these are this is what the code for displaying zero similarly for displaying seven we need to pass this value similarly for displaying four we need to pass this value this is how the led is going to be used as a seven segment display to display numbers from zero to nine and here is the microcontroller 8051 and these are the ports port number two is used there are eight pins in the uh, port of a 8051 microcontroller so starting from 0 up to 7 there are 8 pins here in the port 2 these codes from a b c d e f g and d p making the leds over here to turn on or turn off that is indicating the values 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 correspondingly then we will be having stepper motor stepper motor is also an actuator it can be used as an output device this stepper motor is going to use one permanent magnet here you can observe this is a permanent magnet and we will be having four coils these are not the permanent magnets these are the coils wounded and we are going to energize these coils to act as a magnet so these are the four different values we are going to pass to make the this permanent magnet to rotate let us understand that there are two types of stepper motors one is unipolar stepper motor and another one is bipolar stepper motor in this unipolar stepper motor we will be having two coils per phase the, let us consider this is one phase and this is another phase so two coils are required per phase here a and c are the two coils b and d are the two coils here but in bipolar stepper motor we will be having only one coil per phase this is one coil and this is the other coil for two phases and how the rotation will be if we consider a full step rotation we need to energize the coils a b c d in this method here wherever h is there that is indicating the value 1 wherever l is there it is indicating the value 0 suppose a b r h h and c d r l l means we are passing 1 1 0 0 as the value if this is a coil and this is b coil and this is c coil and this is d coil we are going to make this as 1 this as 1 this is 0 and this is 0 that is making a rotation like this and the next value we are going to pass is 0 from a and b is 1 and c is also 1 and d is 0 and we are making this rotation the values are going to be shifted 1 1 0 0 will be shifted as 0 1 1 0 now the next values will be 0 0 1 1 the next values will be 1 0 0 1 likewise we are going to shift these and four steps are required to complete one complete rotation this is full step rotation and there are there is an another method called wave step rotation here one coil is energized at a time in this full step rotation you can observe we are energizing the two coils at a time we are energizing the two coils here also we are energizing the two coils by providing value one in the wave step method we are going to energize only one coil and these coils are not energized with value zero zero indicating not energized here h indicating the value one so coil 1 is energized to take a step one step rotation similarly here also 
only coil B is energized. Here coil C is energized, here coil D is energized. This is also a method to make a rotation, complete rotation takes 4 steps. But what happens here, here in the full step rotation, here two coils are energized at a time, it produces more torque. The two coils are responsible for the moment. And here the power consumption is also high, but the torque is high. But in the wave step, it uses only one coil for the energization and produces less torque. And one more method is there that is half step rotation. This half step rotation takes totally 8 steps to complete one complete cycle. In the previous case we have observed the com one rotation means it will be at this place, the next rotation will be like this. But here in the half step rotation it is taking the half rotation. So 8 steps are required to complete one complete cycle. And here the energized values are 1, 0, 0, 0 in the first step. In the next step we will be having 1, 1, 0, 0. Again in the next step we will be having 0, 1, 0, 0. So it is the mixture of both full step as well as wave step. If we combine these two it becomes a half step rotation. So it takes totally 8 steps to complete one particular cycle of rotation. This is what the stepper motor is. We can use this stepper motor with a microcontroller. This is microcontroller 8051. Let us take it as 8051. We will be having a driver here. Why this driver is required means this microcontroller ports will be giving less current. To get the more current towards the actuator, this actuator may require, uh, let us take the input for the actuator may be 5 volts. Sometimes this actuator requires 10 volts. Sometimes it actuator requires 15 volts of input also. To get more current and the more voltage is what we are going to do. We are going to use driver IC here. This driver IC ULN 2803, it will be providing only 5 volts of power supply to the stepper motor. So that we can use only 5 volts of stepper motor. The stepper motor which will be operated with 5 volts. And you can see here A, C, B, D are the 4 coils. We will be connecting that to the 4 port pins. A single port with 4 pins are going to be connected with a driver. This is making this coils A, B, C, D to energize depending on the values what we are going to give. 1, 1, 0, 0 is the first value. It will be shifted as 0, 1, 1, 0. And then this 1, 1 will be shifted here. This 1, 1 will be shifted here. Likewise, we can energize these coils, coil A, B, C, D using microcontroller. Thank you.